So right here in the center, I'm going to kind of lose this dark stripe most likely. Let's see here as we work our way out. Would, would have been worked easier last time. Would have been easier last fall. It's a little gnarly today. Can't get that to right quite like I'd like it to. irritating when you keep picking those up and they keep staying with you because they, they really mess your swing up. The cutting edge doesn't cut. It skips and that's dangerous. As long as your tool's sharp and you kind of get a feel for what you're doing, it'll follow that wood and hook in there and you kind of get a idea of what it's going to do each time, but if you get a chip stick, that can deflect that and make it skip at you or whatever. Unlucky. And just kind of chasing that backside from the front side, you know. I'm working my way across here. I know I still have bark on there, but I don't have that bark's not all that thick. I got a pretty good idea of what I can do right here. And what I can't do. This brand, so I can try to catch that. It's not set up the best that I could be for a bowl quite shaped like this. Acidic smell to it because the tannic acid in it. And it just the tannin in it, it just uh, always has that real distinctive odor. It kind of bites on the back of your tongue a little yeah. bit. Kind of bitter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just bitter. So I'm working that real high with my ads because I want, by the time I get down here in the bottom, I want that to be a planing cut in there. I can't be coming in very steep because I'm not real thick. And so I'm, I'm really working down into the edge now. And what I do there is I get a shaving started, and then I just keep hooking the ads in that shaving and chasing that shaving. It's the same thing if you're hewing a beam with a broad axe. It's the exact same concept. Get your axe hooked in the shaving, and then you just use it as your guide, and you just work your way right, right on down in there. And it gives you a lot more control than just kind of swinging randomly at this each time. You just hook that shaving and follow it. You can chase it right down into the wood. Here the noted bolt just keeps changing as it gets thinner. It keeps raising up. That pitch. Here. 
So I went right out there on that edge and come in there real short little strokes. I want to give this look, be a little rounder. I'm going to come out even closer. That would be safer to do with my knife, my spoon knife, but I'm just going to work out here a little farther with my ads. You haven't done a lot of ads work, I'd switch to a spoon knife. Start getting close to your perimeter. Kind of trust your steering abilities. Go ahead and use the ads. But if you don't know, you can blow it right there. That can be a, can be a real problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of leave a little bit of a ridge of that real gnarly wood there, that interwoven grain right in the middle here as I kind of bring this heart together. Had I been thinking, I would have left a little more wood right here. I got into myself a little farther than I should have, but that's okay. There's an endless number of trees. The next one will be perfect. Okay, so now we gotta do the same thing over here. Start up this one. That's really what you're up against. This I might have to go after with a spoon knife. I don't know if I can get all the way out here or not. If I was completely ambidextrous and could just change everything out, I'd just grab there and swing with this hand, but I don't have that skill. And see, that core is clear down there. See how low that is? Mm -hmm. It really brings into question what we're going to do out here. Once I put my hand back here, now I'm going in much straighter. I'm not taking those long diving cuts back towards my hand. I'm trying to loosen some wood up up here. This is no different than any other woodworking exercise. You're always looking to use the weakness of the wood to your advantage. And so the direction the wood's strong in, I'm trying to make it weaker by cutting across it. So I'm cutting right across its grain here. And that gives me the, the maximum advantage. But I can't cut in this way because I don't have a good way to hold. So I'm back to cutting across and I'll clean up with my spoon knife. I still got that core is way low on this side. So I'm going to go in here as deep as I can. And then we'll clean that off and get down to that core so we don't have a core stuck in there. It can split on us later. I don't want to go to all this work of making a bowl just to leave a known flaw in there so it splits out. If a 
flaw you don't know about gets you, that's different. But leaving one in there to get you is just kind of tempting fate. Okay, so this is a little tighter than this side, so I'm going to bring this one out a little bit more, tighten it up. When I'm swinging that and swinging that right at myself, I'm not swinging that in big swings. Those swings all kind of have a stop in them. So I run out of energy pretty much at the bottom of that arc. It's all kind of these are kind of wrist swings instead of arm swings. So I'm I'm just swinging with my wrist, and my wrist only goes so far, so there's a stop. Or if I was going after this full on with my arm, I could get myself in trouble. So when you're in working real close to yourself, it's just things to keep in mind of how you use edge tools. This isn't about being the fastest, it's about not having to have anything sewed up when you're done. You kind of want to take it easy. Now the question is, do we want this to have a flat end or more of a heart shape? And I'm thinking more of a heart shape. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to cut this a little bit more to a point here, and then we'll clean up our sides and bring them in as we kind of get down towards the end here. And I know it's kind of boring with me cutting the color out of here, but there's actually going to be a lot of wild grain in here. So this is going to be really pretty when it's done anyway. It'll be prettier than you think once it's oiled. That's because of the size of my ads. That's about as far as I'm going to go. Then I'm going to take my spoon knife, make that just a little more pointed there. Down in there a little further. Okay. So I'm kind of done as far as I'm going to go, and so now I'm just kind of going back. I'm going to start cleaning up a little bit. And this is really gnarly stuff in here, so I'm just kind of picking my angles of attack. What I don't want is a big tear out. And so I'm just kind of going about this carefully. Kind of feeling my way through it. And eventually here I'm gonna have to give up on my ads and switch tools. I'll always keep the bigger tool going as long as I can. The tool with the most impact. I just can't quite reach down in there like I want to. I'm going to try just a little more right there, and then that's going to be about it for the ads. Maybe just clean this up a little over here, but just about the end of the road for what it can do for us on this project. And the reason I stay with it so long is it's just faster. It's just so much faster to move the wood and clean up all the cuts. And, and over here on the sides, I can kind of make skimming passes with it. And uh, kind of going long grain here where the grain's not gnarly. And I get some nice cleanup work done really fast. So they get down to that bottom. Things start getting funky and see right here that grain's going that direction. We're gonna come in this way, clean that off, and then we'll we'll move on to our spoon knife. Okay. So that's where we're gonna stop with the ads.